Hello, welcome back. My name is Liz, and in this tutorial segment, we will be diving into some beta diversity visualizations. We will be performing some commands in Galaxy using the diversity metrics that we calculated earlier in the workshop from Chime2 Diversity Core Metrics Phylogenetic that will provide us with some visualizations that we'll examine using Chime2 View. As a quick reminder, Beta diversity represents the diversity between samples. Put another way, the similarities or differences in composition between samples within a given data set. Using the artifacts and visualizations we generated from running Chime2 Diversity Core Metrics Phylogenetic, we'll be generating some beta diversity visualizations that will allow us to further explore and examine any trends that may exist within our data that we might not be able to find by just looking at our quantitative results. All right, so let's jump right in. I am gonna start by pulling up the tutorial and scrolling down to the downstream tutorial segment and selecting beta diversity visualizations. Again, making sure our interface selector is set to Q2 Galaxy. Alrighty, so we are going to start off by generating and exploring some ordination plots. Um, so we're gonna be looking at UMAP uh, to start off with, and this is a type of ordination method that can be used in the place of a PCOA or principal coordinate analysis plot, um, and has actually been shown to better resolve differences between microbiome samples in ordination plots. So similar to PCOA, UMAP operates on distance matrices, um, and we'll compute this on our weighted and unweighted unifrac distance matrices. Uh, so that's again gonna be those distance matrices calculated based on those two different diversity metrics. Um, so for the moment, there won't be anything to visualize as a result of these steps, um, but we will come back to visualization of these results. So we are going to start off by using the Chime2 Diversity UMAP tool. Um, so I'm actually going to pull up Galaxy and have these two side by side, these two windows side by side to make things a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to start off by pulling up Chime2 Diversity um, out of our list of plugins here. Um, so I'm going to select Chime2 Diversity and scroll all the way down until I hit Chime 2 Diversity UMAP. I'm going to go ahead and select that. So we are setting our distance matrix um, to the unweighted unifrac distance matrix. Um, and so you'll notice that these are the default um, file names for all of these artifacts um, that we calculated back in the diversity metrics segment. Um, I've just removed the Chime2 Diversity Core Metrics phylogenetic segment of those file names just to make things easier for myself. Um, so my screen might look slightly different than yours and that's why. Um, so I am going to select the unweighted unifrac distance matrix.qza file um, under the distance matrix input. So right here, unweighted unifrac distance matrix. And then I am going to go ahead and select execute. Okay, and while we are waiting for that to complete, I'm going ahead and going to go ahead and click on the Edit Attributes button. And I am going to rename this to uu-umap.qza. Go ahead and click Save. Perfect. Okay. So next we're gonna do the same thing for our weighted unifrac distance matrix. Um, so I'm just gonna click on the Chime2 Diversity UMAP one more time. And 
open this a little bit more so we have a little more room here. Um, so again, for our distance matrix, this time I'm going to select the weighted unifrac distance matrix .qza. And from here, I am going to select execute. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and rename this by clicking on edit attributes. And under the name field, I am going to type in wu-umap.qza. And from here, click Save. Alrighty. So one of the useful features of Chime 2 is that you can integrate data that is per sample as metadata for use in other visualizations. So as an example, alpha diversity values such as Faith's phylogenetic diversity are computed on a per sample basis and thus can be viewed or used as sample metadata. Um, so since beta diversity metrics such as Unifrac are computed on pairs of samples, they're not as useful to view or use as metadata. Um, but ordination values computed from distance matrices, for example, a sample's PCOA or UMAP axes one and two values are computed per sample. Um, so these can be viewed or used as metadata. Um, so in the next few steps, we will integrate our unweighted Unifrac UMAP axes one values, our faith PD evenness and Shannon diversity values as metadata for use in visualizations. And this is going to provide us with a few different ways of interpreting these values. All right, so let's jump back in. I am now going to run Chime 2 metadata tabulate. Um, so I am going to scroll down to Chime 2 metadata in Galaxy. I'm going to go ahead and click on that scroll down and click on Chime 2 Metadata Tabulate. Okay, and then for our input metadata, we are gonna keep this as metadata from TSV. And in our metadata source file, we are going to leave this as sample metadata.tsv. And that can be selected by clicking on this dropdown if that hasn't auto populated for you. So then from here, we are actually going to insert input metadata um, by clicking on this button here. And we are gonna add an additional metadata. Um, and we're gonna, for this metadata, we are going to select from this dropdown metadata from artifact. And we are going to start off with the unweighted unifrac. Um, so that's going to be the uu-umap.qza. So I'm going to select that. And then we are going to insert an additional metadata input after this. Um, so from here, I'm going to click on this again and select metadata from art artifact. And we are going to select the faith PD vector .qza. So I'm just typing that in, going to click on that. And then we are going to add another one. Um, so I'm going to again select insert input metadata, metadata from artifact. <clears throat> And then we are going to select the evenness vector .qza. So I'm just going to type that in here, select that from the drop down. And then we have one more to add here. We're going to add the Shannon vector .qza. So again, selecting input, insert input and metadata from artifact. And then this time we're going to type in that Shannon vector .qza and select that from the drop down. Okay, so we are now ready to go ahead and click execute. And 
then while that is running, I'm going to go ahead and select Edit Attributes and rename this. We're going to rename this as expanded-metadata-sum.qzv. Okay, go ahead and click Save. Okay, so before we move on, I actually want to take a minute to examine the visualization for our updated uh, metadata summary. So that's the um, resultant QZV file um, from the Chime2 metadata tabulate command that we just ran. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and scroll down and I'm going to go ahead and click on view at Chime2 view. Okay, so this will look um, very similar to the um, resultant QZV that we looked at in Chime 2 View back in the metadata segment of the tutorial. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down to the end, and we can actually see an additional six columns here. Um, and so all of these columns have been added as a result of those um, metadata from artifact, um, so those resultant diversity metrics um, that we added to our metadata tabulate command. So these axes one through three that we see here, these are from the UMAP calculation that we did earlier. Um, and again, that is going to be similar to our uh, PCOA um, or principal coordinate analysis. Um, and so you'll notice that the axis three um, is filled with zeros. Um, and the reason for that is because of the way that we intend to visualize this data later, we only calculate calculated two dimensions um, for our UMAP um, instead of three. Um, and if you would like to explore calculating this in three dimensions, um, you're welcome and encouraged to do so um, on your own time. And then we also have our faith PD, um, the evenness vector, and then that Shannon vector. All right, so to see how this information can be used, we're going to generate another version of our taxonomy bar plots from earlier on in the workshop um, that is going to include these new metadata values. So what I'm going to do next in Galaxy is I'm going to go to Chime 2 Taxa. Click on this and we are going to use the Chime2 Taxa bar plot tool. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to set my table to filtered table 4.qza. And this is going to be my feature table of type frequency. Then Next, we're going to set our feature data of type taxonomy um, to taxonomy.qza. And then we're going to go ahead and expand. Um, click here for additional options. And then from our for our metadata, we are going to select insert metadata. We're going to keep this set to metadata from TSV. And then for our metadata source, we're going to start off with this sample metadata.tsv, so our original sample metadata file. And then we're going to insert a second metadata file. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on insert metadata again. This time we're going to select metadata from artifact from the drop-down, and then we are going to select, um, so this is going to look similar to what we just did. Um, we're going to select our, for our metadata source that unweighted unifrac, um, so that's going to be our uu-umap.qza, okay, and then 
we're going to insert metadata again. Select metadata from artifact. And in the metadata source, we're going to search for faithpdvector.qza. And again, we're going to click insert metadata and select metadata from artifact. And metadata source for this one is going to be the evennessvector.qza. So typing that in and selecting that from the dropdown. And then our final one um, is going to be that shannonvector.qza. So again, I'm selecting insert metadata and selecting metadata from artifact. And then I am going to select under the metadata source dropdown. I'm going to type in Shannon vector and select that. Okay, we are now ready to click execute. And so we can see all of the inputs that we added. Again, that's going to be those four different um, diversity metrics, our original sample metadata, the taxonomy file, and our filter table for, um, so our feature table of type frequency. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rename that file to taxa dash bar dash plots dash two dot qzv. So clicking on edit attributes for that resultant um, output dot qzv. So renaming this as taxa bar plots two dot qzv and clicking save. All right, so we are ready to go ahead and look at this updated taxonomy bar plot in Chime 2 view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this QZV file and go ahead and click on view at Chime 2 view. Okay, so this visualization should look similar to um, what we examined um, with Keegan in the taxonomy section of our tutorial. Um, what I'm going to start off by doing is I am going to change this taxonomic level to level three. Um, so we're just getting a little more detail here. Um, so this is, uh, this should look familiar. Um, what we are seeing differently in this bar plot is some additional options for sorting our samples. Um, so I should see all of these same um, sample metadata values um, that we saw before, um, as well as the taxonomic abundance of everything. Um, what should look different is going to be these diversity metrics that we added to our metadata. Um, so now we have some additional metrics that we can use to sort um, the taxonomy bar plot by. Um, so I'll go ahead and start off by um, sorting by the UMAP axis one. And I'm actually just going to focus on these top two firmicuties. Um, so I'm going to highlight these. And we'll see, um, so we can see in ascending order here, um, we have the axis one values um, for our UMAP. And we can actually see a pretty interesting change as I scroll over here. Um, so all the way over, we can see that change, um, pretty drastic change um, from the um, dominance of our first, um, so the dominance of the bacilli or bacilli. Um, I'm sure I've said that wrong. So <laughs> those of you who are thinking to yourself, hmm, that's probably not how I would have said that. You're, you're, 
you're probably correct, um, as well as the clostridia. Um, so we can see if I even just highlight one of these um, and scroll through, we can see that change is pretty drastic here. Um, and so this just provides us with additional um, metrics to kind of look at our data with um, and can provide more useful tools in our toolbox um, for analyzing um, the data set that we have available. Um, so one more example that I wanted to take a look at, um, I'm going to increase our level to level six. Um, so we're looking at a lot more here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and select the evenness um, as our sorting. Um, so as our evenness value increases, um, we can see kind of what we would expect um, to see is that we're seeing a lot more even distribution um, of these different taxa. Um, so at our highest evenness value, um, we're seeing as we expect, a pretty even distribution here. Um, and on the other end, we can see that we're pretty heavily dominant um, for one, um, you know, primarily one um, taxa. So um, these uh, top three here, um, we can see if we look at those, um, that those are pretty dominant um, with that pretty low evenness um, and that starts to drop off um, and we can even see this change um, for this third orange value um, and I'm going to stop attempting to uh, pronounce these because I will horribly botch it. <laughs> um, yeah, we can see that change um, in the distribution. All right, so we've taken a look at how these diversity metrics can be used in examining our um, the taxonomy of our samples, um, but we can now um, integrate these diversity metrics um, as metadata in our ordination plots. Um, so we can also customize these plots in another way. Um, in addition to plot, plotting the ordination axes, um, we can add an explicit time axis to these plots. Um, this is often useful for visualization patterns in ordination plots in time series studies. Um, so in this next segment, um, we'll add an axis for week relative to HCT in our um, visualizations. All right, so let's jump into this next segment. Um, so I am going to be generating four plots that we're going to pull up using Chime 2 View. Um, these are going to be emperor plots. Um, we're going to be looking at our two UMAP ordination plots and then our two PCOA plots. Um, so both the unweighted and weighted of each of those. Um, so we're going to be running essentially the same thing four different times in Galaxy. Um, so bear with me here. All right, so I have the tutorial pulled up as well as Galaxy. I am going to scroll down to Chime 2 Emperor. I'm going to click on that and scroll down to Chime 2 Emperor Plot. Uh, so we can see this is for visualizing and interacting with principal coordinate analysis plots. Okay, so we are going to start with our unweighted unifrac. So in the PCOA results, this is the principal coordinates matrix to be plotted. I am going to set that to the uu-umap.qza. And then we are starting off with our sample metadata um, under the uh, metadata input, leaving that as metadata from TSV. And then we're going to be doing the same thing that we've been doing before, adding additional metadata values um, from Artifact. Um, and that's going to be our additional diversity metrics. So we are going to go ahead and click on Insert Metadata. 
And this time around, we're going to click on Insert Metadata from Artifact. And then for our metadata source, we are going to change this to our uu-umap.qza. Okay, and then same thing, insert metadata again. So clicking on that. And again, setting this to metadata from artifact. And this time we're going to add in that faith pd vector.qza. So I'm just going to type that in here, faith, and click on that. And same thing again, clicking on insert metadata, changing this to metadata from artifact. And next we're adding the evenness vector. I'm going to type that in again, evenness vector.qza. And then one more time, um, this time we're adding in the Shannon vector. So clicking on insert metadata, changing this to metadata from artifact, and setting the source to Shannon vector.qza. Okay, um, the last thing that we need to do, um, so we discussed earlier that we were going to add that axis for week relative to HCT. So, so we're going to scroll down here and select click here for additional options. And we are going to select the insert custom axes. And for here, I am setting that element to week dash relative dash to dash HCT. Um, okay, perfect. So from here, scrolling all the way down, and I'm ready to go ahead and click execute. So just like in our previous commands, we can see all of the inputs that we added, um, our unweighted Unifrac UMAP, the sample metadata, and then our additional diversity metrics. Um, and then we have this output visualization, which we are going to rename to uu-umap-emperor- w dash time since we're adding that axis um, with respect to time. So I am going to do what we've done before, click on this pencil icon to go ahead and edit the attributes of this output visualization. Under the name field, I'm going to select everything, triple clicking, um, and delete that. And from our name, we're changing that to uu-umap-emperor-w-time.qzd. Perfect. So from here, I'm ready to go ahead and click Save. Okay, so we've got our first um, visualization ready. So we're just going to do the same thing um, essentially three more times. Okay, so for these next three plots, um, I'm actually going to use a helpful little trick that Galaxy has available so that we don't have to click on Chime 2 Emperor Plot, add in the exact same inputs that we've done every single time. Um, so I am going to click on this visualization that we just updated with that uu-umap-emperor-with-time name. So I'm going to click on this here, scroll down until I see these two arrows creating a little circle here. And I'm going to click on this. Um, this is going to allow me to run the job again. And it's going to have all of these inputs that we added. So that's just going to save me some time because we are essentially going to be adding almost all of the same things each time. 
So what will be different here is this initial PCOA. I am going to update this to our weighted unifrac for UMAP. So I'm going to click on the wu-umap.qza. And then we can leave the sample metadata as is. We can leave this unweighted unifrac as is, the faith PD as is, and the evenness in Shannon vector. Then I just need to select click here for more options. Make sure that this is still here. Looks good. We still have our custom axis set to weak relative to HCT. And so I am ready to go ahead and click execute on this. So again, we can see our inputs. The only one that should have changed here is that weighted unifrac for UMAP. So scrolling down here, we are going to rename this to wu-umap emperor with time .qzb. So clicking on edit attributes for this, and this time wu dash umap emperor w time dot qzb perfect hitting save here and now i can do the same thing as before i'm going to click on my most recent visualization scroll down to the two circular error arrows click on run this job again And this time we're going to add the unweighted unifrac PCOA results. So I'm just going to type that in for the PCOA results input. OK. And then the remainder of our metadata inputs, sample metadata, UU-UMAP, Faith PD, Evenness, and Shannon are all remaining the same. And then clicking on the additional options, still keeping that custom axis set to weak relative to HCT. So I'm going to go ahead and click Execute. And for this one, we are going to name that output visualization as uu-pcoa-emperor-w-time, since we are now dealing with one of the two PCOA results. So clicking on Edit Attributes, uu-pcoa-emperor-w-time. QZB. Go ahead and click Save. OK, so we have one more left. We have our weighted unifrac for PCOA. And so we're just going to do that same thing one more time. I'm going to click on my most recent visualization and click on Run This Job Again. And only thing that I'm changing is the PCOA results input. I'm going to change that to the weighted unifrac PCOA results. So the rest of my metadata inputs can stay as is. And we still have our custom access set to weak relative to HCT. I'm going to go ahead and click Execute one last time. And we are going to name this one as wu-pcoa-emperor-w-time.qzb, since this one is our weighted unifrac PCOA. So I'll click Edit Attributes from here. And I'm going to change that name to wu-pcoa-emperor-w-time. 
emperor dash w dash time qzv perfect go ahead and click save okay so we are finally all set with our four different emperor plots what we are going to do next is we're going to examine one of these in chime 2 view we're not going to take a look at all four of these together you're encouraged to take a look at all four of these on your own time they should all look quite similar to each other so we're just going to examine one talk about a few different things get everyone a little bit more familiar with using an emperor plot and then we will wrap it up all right so let's go ahead and pull up one of these plots in chime 2 view i am going to click on the most recent one that we generated so the weighted unifrac pcoa so i'll click on this scroll down to view at chime 2 view click on that hyperlink so this is an emperor visualization and these are 3d visualizations so what we're seeing here is a kind of two-dimensional representation of what is actually a three-dimensional plot so what i can do is i can click and drag my mouse across to get different views of our data points so we can see that we have our axes one and two and those are going to be the two axes for our PCOA. And then we also have that third axis, which is our week relative to HCT. So that's our third time axis that we designated. So before we talk about what we're looking at here in the data specifically, I'm just going to spend some time familiarizing everyone with some of the things that we can do using an emperor visualization so we have a bunch of tabs up here and we'll start off by sticking with this color tab and talking a little bit about our options here so we've actually already seen a little sneak peek of this tab back in the even sampling depth video so i can select different color categories um, based on different metadata fields that we have available so i'm going to click on this drop down i'm going to go ahead and select the auto fmt group that we've been looking at in other sections of the tutorial so we can see here that we have now two different color groupings we have our red control group and our blue treatment and we can change the color scheme here so we currently have the classic chime colors of red and blue and i actually find this to be a little intense to look at personally so i am going to scroll down to dark and i'm going to click on that so you know this is all personal preference um, whatever you find is easiest to look at for your color categories so we can just take a look at a few different options here so we can see we have disease here and we have our color codings for leukemia multiple myeloma um, and the rest of our categories um, so we can look at any of the available metadata categories that we have within our data so we have our sample id we have our evenness and for visualizing things like the evenness value um, which is going to be more of a continuous value than discrete um, what we can do is we can actually change the color type from a discrete color to a sequential color um, so i like to use uh, the viridis um, color scheme and we can also select this checkbox here for continuous values um, and so this is going to give us a nice almost heat map um, to visualize those um, 
values from their lowest, um, in this case, evenness value to their highest evenness value. So for purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna continue to look at the auto FMT group. But again, this is another great thing to take a look at on your own. Um, see if you can find any trends um, based on the different color groupings. Okay, so um, another thing that we can take a look at is the axes tab here. So if I wanted to, for example, change the background um, and axis colors, um, depending on if I want to include this in a paper or in a presentation um, and I don't want the background to be black, um, I can change this background color here. So I'll go ahead and change this to white and then change the axes and labels color to black here. So this can also be helpful um, depending on what you want to be using these visualizations for. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to the original orientation. And then one last thing that I wanted to mention is this little gear icon in the upper right hand corner of the emperor plot. What we can do here is we can recenter the camera back to the original orientation. Um, and we can do a few different thing, things here as well. So if I, you know, say, okay, cool, this is the orientation that I want my data to be visible in. What you can do from here is you can click on this gear icon and you can save this as an image. So you can save this as a high res PNG or an SVG with labels. And if you have a saved emperor plot, so you can save your current settings here and you can load other emperor plots um, from previous save settings as well. And then lastly, uh, if you want to really highly customize your plot, you can open this in a Vega editor. And we'll just wait for this to load. And this gives you a lot more customization options for your visualization. So we're not gonna go into this in too much detail here, um, but that's just something helpful for you to be aware of that you can take a closer look at on your own time. Okay. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about here, now that we've kind of familiarized ourselves with these emperor plots is the actual data itself. So what is this information telling us? Um, so if we start back here, we can see these clear, distinct lines in the data. Um, and this is because we're looking at that weak relative to HCT. So that weak relative to the treatment. Um, and we can see that all of these data points are clustered in those specific weak um, or time values. Um, so that makes sense. That is what we would expect to see. So if I look over here, are we actually seeing any trend or any separation between the control and the treatment groups? And the answer is it's currently based on the visualizations that we have here. It's kind of hard to tell. What we will actually go into greater detail on in our next segments um, of the workshop is some more statistics and details as to how we can um, determine what trends we're seeing here. Um, because it kind of looks like we see a little bit of a divergence here between the control and the treatment groups, um, but it's hard to tell for sure. And so this is a scenario where it's really helpful to use our statistics paired with the empirical observations that we're getting from our diversity visualizations. All right, so before we wrap up, one more thing that I wanted to mention um, in our diversity visualizations is that Chime 2's Q2 diversity plugin provides visualizations for assessing whether microbiome composition differs across groups of independent 
samples, for example, individuals with a certain disease state and healthy controls, and for assessing whether differences in microbiome composition are correlated with differences in a continuous variable, for example, subject's body mass index. These tools assume that all samples are independent of one another and therefore aren't applicable to the data used in this tutorial, where multiple samples are obtained from the same individuals. We therefore don't illustrate the use of these visualizations on this data, but you can learn about these approaches and view examples of this in the moving pictures tutorial. The moving pictures tutorial contains example data and commands just like this tutorial does, so you can experiment with generating these visualizations and examining the results on your own. All right, this concludes the beta diversity visualization segment of our workshop. Next, we will discuss longitudinal microbiome analysis using the Q2 longitudinal plugin. Thanks for watching.